folks, welcome to Calvin's Got Game. Today's video is brought to you by the letter D. D is in dog. This is my wiener dog, uh, Chili. He's a spoiled, rotten dachshund. And I got a few pictures up, up here for you. Um, so, one thing before we get started, I've made some videos in the past with, you know, starting with letter A and I went to C. These are my favorite game or games I enjoy playing that start with the letter A, B, C, and now we're doing D. And we're going to try to do the alphabet. We're going to try to go through the alphabet. I don't know if I have a lot of games that start with some of these letters, but we'll do as many as I have. Today, I actually have 10. So we're going to be doing games that start with the letter D that I enjoy playing. So before I get started with number 10, I want you to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications when new videos come out. And if you'd like to support this channel, go to my Patreon account, which will be in the description of this video and help me out if you like. All right, so guys, games that I enjoy playing that start with D. Number 10 is DC Comics Deck Building. <clears throat> I enjoy Marvel. I enjoy DC. Um, characters, heroes, uh, I enjoyed all the villains of, of each of them. I enjoy them. But DC Deck Building is such an easy deck builder. It can be played cooperatively. It can be played competitively. I usually play it cooperatively. We don't really worry about counting points because when I play it with my wife, we just play it competitive or cooperatively and beat the villains, and then we win together. But DC deck building, the uh, DC Comics deck building, you've got your standard deck that you start with. It's just a deck building game. Um, and then you build your deck up, you buy better cards, and you try to take out these villains with certain hit points and things of that nature. The POWs. You have POW and you have, I can't remember what the other one is, for credits to buy. But it's a fun, simple, easy to teach deck builder. And if somebody's never played a deck builder, this one's pretty easy to get them into because it is, it's just easy. And if they like, you know, superheroes and DC Comics, this will be easy to get them into. So my number 10 is DC Comics Deck Building. <clears throat> my number 9, my number 9 is the D&D &D board games. Um, I love the D&D &D system. Uh, these board games, uh, Legend, Legend of Drist, uh, Wrath of a Shardalon, uh, Castle Ravenloft, Ravenloft um, something Abomination, I don't know, it's over here somewhere. Uh, Tomb of Annihilation, that's what it is. Tomb of Annihilation is right there. Uh, Tomb of Annihilation. Guys, I just love the system. I love how the monsters work on the game. I love how you're just going through the dungeon. You're trying to achieve a certain mission. <laughs> it's just fun. Um, I just enjoy it a lot. I like the whole D&D &D dungeon crawl uh, scenarios, themes. It's just really good. So, uh, my number nine is... Pretty much all the D&D &D board games. I like them. Uh, my number eight is Dice Town. Dice Town, if you're a fan of Yahtzee, you're, you're going to love this game. Um, well, I say that. It's a little more difficult than Yahtzee. Not much. You're rolling your dice. These dice have faces of cards on them. I think it's 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. Yeah, something like that. 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King. Yes. That makes six sided. So, yes. And so what you're trying to do is there's different things you can accomplish on the board. Um, there are, if you roll the most amount of nines, you'll get something. If you roll some amount of tens, jacks, queens, kings. And, and then there's the one that you have the best poker hand. So if you have the best poker hand, um, you're going to get something else. <clears throat> so you're always... I won't say always, but, well, you will always get something because you can always go to Dry Gulch or uh, something that's called Dry Gulch or something like that. So if you didn't win anything at the top of the board by getting any of the most of anything or the best hand, you can always go to Dry Gulch and you can get one thing. So depending on the dice you roll. So in this game, you're just trying to get the most victory points. And you're, you've got these cups and it's a loud game and you're shaking these these dice, and you're slamming them on the table, and you open it up, because you know basically what you're getting, right? And so then you move the dice after everybody's rolled, you're moving the dice, everybody's rolling at the same time. But if you want to keep a dice, an extra dice, you got to pay money for that. 
because you only keep one dice per turn. So <clears throat> it's just such a fun, fast-paced game. Now, the person in my game group does not like this game. Um, Kelly, I'm, I'm mentioning you because she did not like this game because it had some take. it has some take that in it to where people can steal cards from you. And she didn't necessarily like that aspect of the game. I think she liked everything else, but that aspect bothered her a little bit. But number eight is Dice Town. Number seven is Dice City. I enjoy Dice City. Um, you've got this board, and you're rolling dice, and you put the number. There, there you got, uh, I think it's five colored dice. There's a, a black, a blue, a yellow, a white, and a red. And so if you roll a five in red, you put it on five on the red space. There's numbers at the top. You just put it where it goes. And you'll get to do whatever that building says you can do. Now, as you go through, you're buying these little cards that go onto your board to cover up those spaces. And then when you roll that again, you'll get to do a better action. And so you're trying to score the most victory points. And you're trying to fight off bandits. You're trying to buy some ships. You're trying to do... Or you're trying to sink pirate ships, battle pirate ships. I'm not sure what those are. But anyway, so you're trying to build up your city, right? So you can accomplish more things. So Dice City is my number seven. I enjoy playing that game. Number six is Dragonfire. Dragonfire is kind of like Shadowrun Crossfire. You are, <clears throat> it's just set in a DD and uh, kind of world. But you're trying to defeat certain things. You have a, a mission that you're trying to do. It's a deck builder. You're trying to buy cars to put in your deck. And you have multiple different... Um, uh, I can't think of what they're called. Multiple different symbols. And so each card that you're trying to defeat has multiple different symbols. So you're trying to get, um, I don't know, intelligence or, or fighting... Uh, some other things that you're trying to get to defeat these guys out from in front of you because they actually come in front of you and they attack at the end of your or on their turn to, to go. So you're trying to get rid of them as fast as possible. And you're trying to go through these scenes. So the chapters, scenes, whatever. And once you do, then you move on to chapter two, chapter three. And after chapter three, then you can level up. You can do things. Uh, and your character, you have a character sheet that you're leveling up as you go through, and you'll get to add things to your deck and do certain things. Guys, I really like Dragonfire. It's a lot of fun. That's why Dragonfire is my number six. My number five now <clears throat> is Discoveries, the Journals of Lewis and Clark. I enjoy this game. I've recently got uh, Discoveries of Lewis and Clark, uh, not the Journals of Lewis and Clark. But the discoveries of uh, Lewis and Clark, and I think I like that a little bit more. But we're going to talk about discoveries, the journals of Lewis and Clark. This one, you're rolling dice to get um, resources to do the things you need to do on the board to accomplish uh, building out, um, exploring land, and visiting the Native American places where they can help you out. Um, this game's a lot of fun. I do enjoy playing it, but I think I do like the other one a little bit better uh, now that I've played it. I hadn't played it when I put this on the list. So, uh, Discoveries, uh, the Journals of Lewis and Clark, you are trying to get just the most victory points. So, you're trying to claim cards uh, before other people do uh, for your journey. And you may have to have, I don't know so many river crossings, so many mountain crossings, and your, your dice are helping you get these resources to do that. Um, it's just, it's an interesting game, and I like it. The luck base of it on rolling the dice is a little bit of an issue for me, but I do enjoy playing the game. It's not bad. I enjoy it quite quite often. We play it. So that's why Discoveries, the Journal of Lewis Clark is my number five. The number four is Darkness Comes Rattling. Now, I mention this quite often on videos, especially for cooperative games and other things. It didn't make my top 10 uh, cooperative list, though, but it is one of my favorites. Darkness Comes Rattling, you are in this, I'm not sure what it is, whether it's uh, Native American folklore, uh, but 
you're going around the board trying to keep the winds happy. There's four winds that blow. You're trying to keep them happy because they help you. And you're trying to fight off these monsters, these people, creatures, or whatever they are. But what has happened is, is the great snake has swallowed the sun. And once you have gotten some equipment, the person at certain points, when, when the sun gets to a certain point down the snake's belly, um, you'll be able to enter the snake's mouth and try to catch the sun. And if you can do that, catch the sun and beat one more um, trial, then you've saved uh, the land. Uh, guys, this game is so much fun. I enjoy it a lot. It's got some quirkiness to it, but I really do enjoy the game. The theming of it is just something I haven't seen before. I really like that. I call it Native American folklore, but I really enjoy it. It's so good. They did a great job on this game. That's why number four is Darkness Comes Rattling. I enjoy it. Number three is Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Guys, you can't go wrong bringing this out as a party game to a table of up to, I think it's 14 people or 12 people, somewhere along in there, you can't go wrong. Everybody has three clue, or four clues in front of them and four murder weapons. So the murderer picks one of each. Everybody has their eyes closed. The murderer picks one of each. The forensic scientist knows who the murderer is. He knows what he picked. So he has these boards, he or she has these boards that they're putting bullets on to give clues and they kind of say you know this is uh, the time of murder was at night uh, the condition of the body or the clothes were you know uh, d d uh, strewn or whatever and so what you're trying to do is point people to the murderer if you're the forensic scientist now there is a witness as well so the witness knows who the murderer is as well because the forensic scientist pointed them out but if you're the witness, you can't be too obvious because once somebody guesses that it's this person is the murderer and they know exactly the, the, the clue or the evidence and the murder weapon, um, you only get one guess. Everybody has one guess as a detective. But when the murderer is found out, he has one shot to kill the witness and he'll get off scot-free. Guys, this game is a lot of fun. Deception Murder in Hong Kong is a blast. And if you've never played it, You've got to get it to the table. Where have you been? Uh, it's such a fabulous game. That's why Deception Murder in Hong Kong, my number three. Number two is Dark Moon. Guys, Dark Moon, a lot of people d don't really care for this game because it's a spinoff of uh, Battlestar Galactica. I never played Battlestar Galactica. I have no idea what it is about, but I do hear a lot of people talking about it, especially on Dice Tower. Sam Healy and them love this game. Uh, I don't think Sam Healy likes uh, Dark Moon because of the rolling the dice behind the screen, and you may actually have all bad dice that you can't contribute, and it makes you look guilty as the traitor. I think that's part of the charm of the game because you can, even if you're not the traitor, uh, you're still trying to convince everybody else that you're you're not because you put out dice that did not help. So this game, I think, is it does what it does in a quicker. Uh, they say in a quicker fashion than Battlestar Galactica. Like I said, I've never played it, uh, Battlestar Galactica. But I think Dark Moon is so good. You're trying to escape off of this. Uh, you're trying to get this ship running again to get back to Earth because you're floating out in space. And missions are coming through. You've got to do side little missions to, to fix things on the ship and to do things. And if you're the traitor, man, you're trying to mess up everything. Guys, this game is a lot of fun. I know uh, Sam Healy doesn't care for it. There may be other people out there that don't like it. But as for me and my game group, we stand behind it. I absolutely uh, love Dark Moon. That's my number two. And number one... Shouldn't be any uh, surprise to anybody. It's that poster right back there. It is Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter is a fabulous game. This game has a crossroad system. So the person that's to your left is pulling a card. And he's looking at He or she's looking at it, right? 
And if you meet that requirement, say you're just supposed to move somebody out of the colony, they stop you and say, okay, we got to do this. And so they read this scenario. You make a decision that could change the way the game goes. You, it, It's just awesome how that works. Now, sometimes they don't trigger, and that's fine too. You can continue playing the game because the game is not easy. You've got tons of zombies when you start out trying to get away from them, trying to keep them off of you, trying to keep them out of the colony. Uh, <clears throat> there's different scenarios that you're trying to accomplish your main mission. Uh, and then there's side missions. You need food, you need gas, you need tools. So you've got to get it together. And that one person who's the trader can mess you up on getting food for the day. You've got to feed the colony. There's so much going on, but the game is so fun. You have different locations you go to. You roll this bite dice or this uh, exposure dice. And if you get bit, you're dead. And then it goes to the next person with the lowest initiative. And if that person wants to go ahead and say, okay, I'm just going to let it die with me, then no one else has to roll the exposure dice. But if they say, I'm going to roll the exposure dice, and they either they get bit or they get a frostbite or a, uh, a wound, they're gone. And it goes to the next person. So you could wipe out a whole colony. Guys, this game is a lot of fun. Dead of Winter is my number one because it is such a great game. It has multiple scenarios. You can play it cooperatively or you can play it with a trader. Most of the time I play it with a trader unless I'm playing two-person. The game is absolutely fabulous. Well, guys, that's my top 10 favorite cooperative games. I hope the person that requested this uh, enjoyed it. Um, I made that top 10 hard games list back in a while back, and they asked me to make this one. So I hope that this did uh, gives them some information about my top 10 favorite cooperative board games. And this, this video is brought to you by the letter D, and you can hear my dog outside barking. So he doesn't like it when I put him outside or he's away from me for any length of time. But sometimes you got to take a break and do some videos. Guys, thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell for notifications. Remember what I always tell you. Get a board game to the table. Spend time with your friends and family. And thanks for watching Calvin's Got Game.